Hello everybody and welcome back to another Addicted Fishing video. Today, I woke up this morning and it was really cold and it's starting to be fally. The leaves are changing color and I said to myself, you know what sounds good tonight for dinner? Soup. And then another little epiphany went off in my mind and I thought, not only soup, but how about fish soup? So, we're out here on the water. I'm gonna look up a brand new recipe I've never done before to make some kind of fish soup. I'm thinking I wanna make it kind of authentic, like a fish head soup or something like that, but you guys are gonna to have to stick around and find out what we decide. So, we're gonna hit the water. We're fishing for coho, we're fishing for chinook. I got twitching jig spinners, I got bait. We're gonna go back bounce, but we're gonna try and catch one fish really quick, fast as we can. Then we're gonna to head to the store, we're gonna get our ingredients for the soup, then we're gonna get in Kanigi's kitchen and we're gonna get this thing boiling up and see how it comes out. So, if you guys haven't already, go down here, hit subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and stick around, because today's gonna to be fun, it's gonna be fast paced, and hopefully it's gonna have a tasty little treat at the end waiting for us. All right, so we fished our way through this little back eddy thing here, just got us started with the jig. I'm getting a little antsy. I've been getting a lot of fish on bait lately. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna pick up the old back bouncing rod here. I'm gonna put about, I don't know, ounce and a half, two ounce lead on. I'm gonna get some eggs ready. Then we're gonna head up into some heavier and deeper water and try to back bounce for a salmon with some eggs. So I'll show you guys that setup when we get up there. Um, but then it's starting to get a nice little evening glow to it. So we might head up into the flats, get into some shallow water, try to find some fish. But I'm really wanting some soup tonight. I'm getting hungry already. We've been out here all day filming for you guys. So let's get some eggs on. Let's head up to the next hole. And let's get this bait down in the water and get us fish. Okay, so I got my two ounce Dave's Tangle Free on there. I'm gonna grab some eggs here. Go for the good ones. Some in here that are a little bit better than the others. Check that out. Try to find us a couple of not so stinky sandos. Oh yeah, some good ones in there. Let's go with those two. These baits cut up really quick. So in the fish soup, we won't be using any of this nasty stuff. These are the baits that we're gonna be using here. Let's cut these sandos in half, get rid of those claws. Okay, so I'm just gonna take that row, go right underneath my egg loop here. Just like that. Stick that tail right on there like that. Throw that around it really quick. And we're fishing. Okay, so now that I'm all ready to go, show you guys my setup really quick. I got my medium action rod, this one's about nine feet long, down to barrel swivel that's sliding. That's got my weight on it. I got a little bead and another barrel swivel that's gonna keep me in line. Got a little corky here midline to keep my stuff up off the bottom, and I got my bait. So I'm gonna pull up to the head of the hole, I'm gonna back this thing down in there and hopefully put it right in those fish's face, back it right down into them, and wait for that bite to happen. What I'm doing here now, you guys, I pulled out in the current, trying to hold my boat steady and straight, drop my bait all the way back to the bottom, kind of keep it about a 45 degree pitch back behind the boat, and then I'm just gonna slowly start working it down and into those fish. And the bite doing this is really my favorite part of it. When these fish finally do find that bait and you get it right in front of them, they just absolutely clobber it. And it's just you and the fish. There's no bobber, there's no diver, there's no anything in between your hand and that fish. So it can be a pretty, really, really, really pretty exciting bite. Definitely one of my favorites. Okay, back on the hunt. Came up to the cheater spot. We're getting a little desperate for dinner here, so we ran up, sticking with old blue faithful here. The fish jumping all over the place. There it goes, first cast. Got him. Right when we had lost all hope, you guys, I just made a random cast over into a corner where I see a lot of fish. Thing made about a 10 foot dive, I jigged it once. Bammy. 
Looks like a nice big fish on here. Oh my God, that's a really nice one. Please stay on, please stay on, please stay on. Sneaking up on him. Isn't really over here yet. My goodness, <sighs> comment below with what you thought of, of what just happened there. Oh my God, that line went slack. I was praying to everything that it would stay on there. <laughs> yes, that's dinner guys. He went in the net, he went in the net, he went in the net. Oh my God. And it's a keeper! Whew. As soon as that thing hit the net, the thing flew out. I didn't even know it was in the net yet either. Sean didn't either. We both looked at each other, gave each other the same exact face. And this guy decided to come play with us. Just an absolutely perfect coho. Well, there's our dinner fish. I'm gonna lean over here. I'm gonna get the gills cut on this thing. Get this thing good and bled out. Because what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the carcass. And I'm gonna boil the spine in the head and try to get all of that meat off of that off of that tail and all that meat off of the collar and off the head itself. So it'll make for a really cool little recipe here. But just a perfect little male, perfect little dinner fish, just enough for two people. Oh my God! Thank the creator for that. That was so cool, so so cool. Down to the wire. Pretty much called last cast. Was just about to give up on the video tonight and uh, made that one. Last little poke over there behind the old shelf. And thank you, Mr. Coho. He played ball on the old one ounce addicted twitcher. Let's get him in the bag. Let's get back to the house. All right, so back to the boat ramp. Getting to get this thing prepared. I like to do give him a little wash first. Get some of that extra little blood out of the gills. Then I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna slide it down at a nice steep angle. Try to get a lot of that slime and all that crap off of there. Just before it goes into the bag at least. Get some of that slime off. On the other side, do the same thing. Now, let's get this thing on the table. Got my filet away fish mats here. Awesome little sponsor of ours. Slide that knife right up, Billy. Just like so. So, like I mentioned before, I think, I'm, I'm not sure yet, so don't hold me to it, but I'm gonna try to maybe make this soup, this recipe with just the skeleton itself, but I'm gonna cut this meat normally just how I would. Just gonna do a normal fillet job on this fish. Right down through there. Getting awfully deep with that fillet. I'm not gonna leave a whole lot of meat on that bone there. So, got my first fillet. Okay, so there's our carcass. I'm gonna wash that off really quick. Probably get that a little more cleaned up. Just like this. Take that bloodline out. Try to get it nice and clean. We'll do a little bit better job of this at home in the sink, of course. You guys can already see there's actually quite a bit of meat on there. We got that collar meat. We got the meat off of the cheeks and the head and everything else. Off that inside there, so just go ahead and break that vertebrae just like that. Stick that in there, good to go. All right, so we got our flays in our bag. We're gonna head to the store, we're gonna get a few ingredients for this, and we'll see you right here in the kitchen. Kinnegy's Kitchen. So the way this is all gonna start, I'm gonna use the carcass. I looked up a couple recipes. I'm gonna put my own little twist on some of the classic recipes that are out there in the world. And obviously this fish head soup is not something that is new to the world. Uh, it's something that, you know, I've, again, I've had a lot of different people, a lot of old ladies at the boat ramps 
that stop me and say, hey, don't throw those carcasses back in the river. I wanna take them home so I can make soup. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take that dorsal fin off. I'm just gonna get this carcass nice and cleaned up here. I'm gonna get that off, I'm gonna get these gills out. Get a nice little slice right in here. That. Pull those gills back, get all that gross stuff out of there because we don't want that in our soup. And I want to just try to get it nice and clean so that I'm only getting that good meat and that skin that I'm going to be cooking with. So, just going to give this whole thing a very, very, very good cleaning because, again, this is all going to be making up my broth. So, I want as much of the blood and everything else is going to kind of sour that broth out of there. So, I'm going to do my best, get this whole thing cleaned off. Take me just a second here for you guys. We'll fast forward through it for you. There it is. <laughs> There's our main ingredient. Nom, 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 nom. I think this soup is going to be very good, world. What do you think? Who ever told you not to play with your food? I'm gonna do about three. This is about two cups that goes into one of these little jars, so I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do two of these here. Just enough to where that head's gonna get submerged a little bit. Perfect. Put this over on the stove. Get that thing fired up. Get that water going. Now what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna add just a little bit of this, can't believe it's not bouillon. It's just a bouillon style stock. Give it a little scoop in there. And a little bit goes a long way in this stuff, so that's probably what, I'd say about one tablespoon total right here. I'm gonna plop that in. Maybe just go a small tiny bit more, just, just for fun. Pop that in, because I don't want to take away from the flavor of the fish. So I'm going to add a little bit of that vegetable stock, but if you just use just the fish, it'll tend to, you know, kind of overpower. It might be a little bit watery tasting. So I'm going to add a little bit of that bouillon. I'm going to get this fish head going in there as soon as this is boiling. Then we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. All right, so the other part of this recipe that I'm going to do, <clears throat> there's potatoes, there's dill, there's bay leaves, and I'm adding the mushrooms and the green onions here just because they're one of my favorite things to put in the soup. So this is kind of a traditional old Russian and actually an Asian recipe as well. But I'm going to go a little bit off the grain. Normally they'd use normal potatoes. I like sweet potatoes. They're kind of a timely thing for the fall this time of year. So <clears throat> I'm going to do these just like they call for in the recipe though in big chunks. So it says about two inch pieces or what you're gonna want. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna slice that thing right down the middle like this. I'm gonna put these great big meaty chunks of potato into my boiling broth. And I'm gonna put these in after I add the fish. So I've got a couple cremini mushrooms here. I'm gonna go big, big chunky style with these. Again, this is a hearty meal. I'm gonna go a nice little pile of these green onions. This always goes well with any soup. So I'm going to be adding this cream sauce to the soup as well. Got a little bit of this fresh dill cut up. Mmm, this is really going to light this dish off, I think. That dill is really kind of the staple of a fish, a fish head soup, is that dill flavor, that creamy sauce. I'm going to go pretty generous with the dill. I want to be able to taste that, but I don't want it to overpower everything. So I'm going to go with that, that amount of dill right there. And then these bay leaves kind of just go in by themselves. These float around and really add a lot of different flavors. So probably put two, maybe three of them in there, just like so. What a colorful, tasty, smelly little ensemble of ingredients here. I can't wait. Let's get the soup going. Okay, you see as that water started to start to boil here, that little bit of that bouillon, it started to disperse into that, into that water, giving it just a little flavoring in. You don't want to overpower it. We're not, we're not making like a chicken noodle soup type of thing here. We're making a fish noodle soup. So, we got our water boiling. She's going. In goes the main ingredients, everybody. Boy, here goes nothing. Yeah, so it's only been in there about five minutes and you're starting to see that meat already pull apart. So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna let this go for just a little bit. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna wait for all that meat to just fall off the bone. I'm not even gonna bother scraping. 
Because once that thing's boiled enough, I'll be able to grab both of those skeletons from that head, those fins, and that backbone and just pull them right out. Then I'll be able to add the rest of my ingredients. And I want to let it boil long enough to kind of get that bone marrow and everything out of that skeleton and into that broth. And then I'll pull all the bones out and get the rest of my stuff in here. And just because I'm feeling frisky, I'm going to go with a couple of three, four whole garlic cloves in there. Oh, I'm already warm and cuddly inside. Good thing it's almost bedtime because after a meal like this, it's gonna put you in the dirt. Okay, I think it's flipping time. See if I can even do it. Oh, it's falling apart really nicely. It's really coming apart in there. As you can kind of see here, I'm just helping it along now, trying to kind of get some of that meat off. I'm going against the grain, like I said, but of course I can't sit here and not play with something. So I'm just going through and any of this piece, any of these pieces that that meat is completely falling off and is just bone left. I'm just using my tongs and picking it out, that little cheek plate. Look at that, even his eyeball just fell out. Eee. It kind of has this aroma to it already, kind of like an Asian style of soup. It's got a really nice fishy smell to it. A little bit of that vegetable broth adding to it. I mean, like it's, I'm, I'm really, really excited for this. It was kind of just a funny idea of mine to do this. Uh, but as it's kind of come along in process, I'm really actually thinking this might be one of a new, fun, cool recipe that I get to use when I just want to have fish a little bit different way, you know? Backbone's just about picked clean there. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it. Comment below if any of you addicts out there are watching this and you've made fish head soup or something, somebody in your family has a really good recipe for it. Comment below with what that recipe is or if I'm totally screwing this up. If you're watching me pull this apart and waste all these nice tasty pieces, be sure to comment below and say, hey, you're a dummy, quit doing that. But if you like the way this is looking and you think this looks tasty, be sure to drop a comment below saying the same thing as well. Okay. That's all that's left of the head. It's the pit of the eyeball. All the meat's gone. I'm gonna keep filtering through a lot of this. Seeing if I can't. Keep pulling little bones out just like that. You know, and honestly everybody, we're starting to get really clean here. You're starting to see all that nice meat. No weird colors, no bones. No crunchy stuff. I did a pretty good job of getting a lot of the skin out of there too, even. This fish wasn't super, super chrome fresh, so you know I don't want too much of the stuff that's in the skin in, in my soup as well, so. All right, but you get the idea. I got most of the, the hazardous stuff out of there. Nothing but some good tasty meat in there left. Now, here comes the fun part. So first, I'm gonna do a couple handfuls here. I'm gonna get this thing back going hot. I'm gonna go mushrooms. Add those mushrooms and those potatoes. Turn that thing back up and we'll let these things start going. Also, when I add those mushrooms and those potatoes, I'm gonna throw in those bay leaves. Those bay leaves, as they start to get warm and cook into that soup, will start to add like a nice kind of herby, almost like a oregano or, or a type of flavor. And oh my goodness, I almost forgot our onion. So instead of using a full onion, I'm just gonna use a shallot here. It's kinda like mini onion. It's like onion garlic almost. So I'm gonna just do big slices, big chunks of that bad boy. The onions right in there, let those get to cooking. Yummy. Okay, I'm gonna throw a cover on that. Okay, so we've given that thing about five minutes. I'm gonna add my big pinch of dill here. Oh, ho, ho, that looks good. Get a handful of these green onions. And last but not least, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of butter. Toss that bad boy in there. And then, the grand finale of it all, the heavy whipping cream. You can use coconut milk if you're lactose intolerant. You can use anything. That's kind of the cool thing about this meal. It's very gluten-free uh, and it's very, very healthy. The, that salmon, 
other than this whipping cream, but if you do put the coconut milk instead, that will change that. So I use about a fourth cup to a half cup of that whipping cream. I'm just gonna let that start to marinate around, let all those seasonings start to get familiar with each other. A little dash of some secret seasonings. Don't forget the jars. You guys ready for the moment of truth? Let's check it out. Wow. So at first, let's just take a look at this thing in the pot. Super creamy. Lots of really tasty, healthy ingredients. Get a couple of scoops here. Man, that looks good. A little bit of that dill just kind of coating everything. Making sure to get enough of that fish. Oh, goodness gracious. Get that one. Really right there. Have a look at that. Doesn't that just look delicious? Like any good chef, I better try my food. So, stick, you see how those potatoes are perfectly done now? Spoon cuts them really nice and easy. Let's get down there and get some of those goodies. Some of that meat, some of that dill, some of that, oh my God, I'm drooling. I'm literally drooling on myself. Oh my God. Got a bone. Make sure you get the rest of those bones. I was in a hurry. I'm going for bite number two. Holy crap. You know what they say, a quiet table means it's a good dinner. And I don't really have much to say about this. Other than, it's gonna be quiet in here for a while. That is delicious. It's such a cheap meal. You know, using a piece of fish that I would have wasted, I put the meat in the freezer, gonna make smoked fish or whatever else with the fillets, but was able to use the skeleton and the skull to make this absolutely delicious meal for about $5. I and mean, this could feed a whole family, honestly. So let it be a lesson. Don't throw that fish away if you have the choice, especially in the fall when it's nice and it's cozy and it's really cool to come home and eat a nice hot bowl of soup. Mm. That is an awesome recipe. If you guys enjoyed this video today, be sure to drop a comment below with what your favorite part was. This soup is absolutely to die for. So I recommend that any one of you addicts out there that wants to go and try one of these delicious recipes, go online, check one out. I threw a lot of my favorite things in here. There's stuff that normal recipes don't call for. So again, drop that thumbs up, leave a comment below with what you thought of today. And if you wanna see more cool videos just like this one, go up and click this link to one of our other Catch and Cook videos. Be sure to go down here, hit subscribe, smash that little bell notification, hit the thumbs up, and again, leave a comment below and you could be entered to be the comment of the day just like this one right here. Thank you so much, you guys. Until next time, you stay fishy and we'll see you out there.